Welcome along to this video series where we are learning how to create a maze game in Scratch. So in this game that we are creating, there are three fairly simple levels where you've got this maze to navigate your way through. You can collect some crystals on the way as you head over to the portal here. As you hit the portal, it will take you on to the next level. And if you're on level three, which is the final level, and you hit the portal, it then is game over. Okay, so it's a fairly simple game to play, but there is some um, interesting coding concepts that you will learn along the way. So let's have a quick look at an example of how this game works. So use your arrow keys to move this little orange guy around the page. Uh, you just go around and collect the crystals if you would like. Blue crystals are worth one point. Purple crystals are worth three points. And basically you just work your way through now, going through the maze and hitting the portal, and it takes you to the next level. Now if you hit the walls, so if I hit this green wall for example, I'll go up the top here and hit this, it makes a noise and it takes you back to the start down here. Okay, so just be aware of that. If you do hit the walls in any of the levels, it will return you to your starting position. Okay, we've got a griffin here. If he hits us, again, just like I'm hit the walls, it takes us back to our start position. So just be careful there that you don't hit the griffin. He is the bad guy. And basically navigate your way through. Collect the crystals if you want, if you are keeping score. And then hit the portal. So I'll just... Hit this last portal, as you can see the level's got a little bit more complex now with a few diagonal walls there to navigate our way through. So you need to work out your diagonal controls there. You can see it's a bit harder to get past the griffin as well. So as the game progresses it does get a little bit um, more difficult to complete. There we go, just managed to get my way through. So when we hit this portal, because it's the last level, it's game over and just says you win. So you've completed the game. Thank you, Dave. So let's get started on creating this game today. Now I'm going to break this tutorial up into different videos. In the first video today, we're going to be simply working on creating the backdrops and the maze itself. Okay, so I want you to load up a new file in Scratch and you'll be greeted with a screen like this. First thing I want you to do is delete the Scratch cat from the game and head over to the backdrop section over here, the backdrop panel. And I want you to go down and press the blue button here to choose a backdrop backdrop from scratch. Now I've got a space theme with mine. You don't have to follow my idea, but I found a few cool backgrounds with the space idea, so I'm gonna run with that. Uh, the first background that we're gonna bring in is the stars. And if you go to backdrops up here, you'll see now that this stars backdrop is in your um, stage backdrops. There's also this backdrop one, which is just the plain white backdrop that you can now hit the trash can on and delete. Okay, so we've got the stars backdrop in. I'm gonna add some more backdrops in though, because each time we progress to a new level, I want the backdrop to change. So go and press the blue button down the bottom here in the backdrop costumes. Go back to the space um, subheading here. And the second one that we might bring in is the galaxy. We're going to do that again, um, go back to the space theme. The third one we're going to bring in is the moon. And one more time, back to the space theme, we're going to bring in the nebula. So we've got stars, galaxy, moon, and nebula backdrops now in our game. Okay, next, whoops, sorry, the next thing we need to do, staying on this backdrops tab, is simply draw the maze. Okay, and the way that I'm going to draw the maze is I'm going to press the blue button at the bottom that says convert to vector. That's just going to make uh, resizing the lines a little bit easier and moving them around a little bit easier than if it was a bitmap. Okay, I'm just going to use the line tool here for drawing the lines. And for the first level, my outline is going to be a yellow color. Okay, so play around with the levers here until you can find yourself a nice bright yellow, something like that. The thickness, that's a bit of a guess for now. I'm going to try size 10. And uh, we'll start drawing some lines and we'll see how we go. So all you need to do is click and drag. I can see that line probably a little bit skinny for my liking. I might double that and try 20. See how that looks. Yeah, that's a bit better. So I'm going to go with 20. Okay, now all you have to do is click and drag. And I hold shift while I'm doing this to keep the lines perfectly straight. And it can go off in any angle. As you can see, as I move my mouse around here, you can draw perfectly light, straight lines at any of those angles there. Okay, if you don't hold shift, you can move it around freely like so, but you won't get those perfectly straight lines. So try and hold shift when you are drawing your maze. So it's just a matter of drawing them and making sure they connect up with one another. 
like so. There's the first part of my maze. And it doesn't matter if you go outside the lines either in Scratch. Okay, you're not going to see it if it goes outside the lines. Um, so I'll just draw a few more lines here for you. And then I'm just going to speed things up so you don't have to sit here and watch me draw all my levels. I've got three different levels to do. I'll just do this first one, I think, uh, with you guys. And then... Um, I'll leave you to it to draw the rest yourself. You don't have to copy me, by the way. Uh, do whatever you want for your mazes. I'm just making stuff up here as I go. Make sure the gaps are big enough, too, for your player to fit through. You don't want to have really cozy little gaps where your player can't fit through. So make sure the gaps that they're going to be walking through are going to be a reasonable size. Um, what else can I chuck in? I might chuck a little one down here to fill up a bit of space. There. That's probably all I need to do. That's one level. If you look at it up here in the top um, right of your screen on your stage, that doesn't look too bad. So that's all you need to do to draw your first level. Something like that. Now for the second level and the third level, what I want you to do is the same thing, but just change the color of your walls. So convert to vector is the first thing you should be doing. Picking the line tool up next. And then for your outline, just pick a new color. So for the second level, I'm going to change it to a bright green like so. Okay, I'm going to speed the video up here now while I draw in level two and level three, and I'll come back and show you what we need to do for level four. So I'll see you in a moment. Alright, so that's my three levels all drawn up. So I've got that one, that one, and that one. On the final level, the one that says Nebula, all we need to do is just write a message that the player has won the game. So I'm just going to grab my text tool. I'm going to convert it to vector as well. And with my text tool there, choose a fill color. Uh, it doesn't matter what color. Something nice and bright that will stand out on this backdrop. I think probably yellow will look good. Change a font to pixel, which looks like a video game kind of font. Click on the screen and just write you win in capital letters. You can then grab your select tool there, the black arrow, and just resize it so it fills up a good chunk of the page. Uh, if you want, you could center it like so. And that's all you really need for the last backdrop. Okay, so we've got one, two, three and four. There's only one little bit of code I want to put onto the backdrops here. So with your backdrops still selected, go to your code. And we just need to go down to our events. And when we start our game, so when the green flag is clicked, we just want to tell the computer which backdrop it should load up. Okay, so go to looks, and I want you to switch the backdrop there to the first one, which is stars. So every time we press the green flag, it will go back to level one, which is the one with the starry night sky background. Okay, that's all I'm going to show you in this video. In the next video, we're going to add our player to the game and we're going to start moving him around the maze. So I'll see you in the next video.